Hi, I'm Rich Lund. This is Indie Labs, and we put the science in your hands. Have you ever met someone where no matter what you say, they disagree with you? No matter what you want to do, they want to do the opposite? Well, in the world of electricity and magnetism, there's something a lot like this. It's called Lenz's Law, and that's what we're going to explore today. If you've been keeping up with the Indie Lab series, you've noticed that the last few episodes, we've been having a lot of fun with electricity and magnetism. These two go together because, really, they are aspects of the same thing, electromagnetism. And if you continue learning about one, it's near impossible to not learn some things about the other. Well, this episode is going to keep that electromagnetic momentum going. In the last episode, Indie Labs number 27, we showed you how you can induce electric currents that will cause magnets to fall slower than it seems like they should. Well, today we're going to look at that same idea, but from a different perspective. But first, let's get some terminology straight. While we never actually called them by name, when we were inducing electric currents in our copper using the falling magnets, we were creating what is called eddy currents. Eddy currents are loops of electrical current that are being caused by either a moving or varying magnetic field, or that conductor moving through a varying magnetic field. Now, as we also saw in that episode, whenever a current is produced this way, it also then will produce its own magnetic field. In fact, all electrical currents produce their own magnetic field. That induced magnetic field caused by an induced current will always oppose the changing magnetic field. So if that magnet is coming towards a conductor, the induced current produces a magnetic field that repels the magnet. But if the magnet moves away from the conductor, the induced field will oppose this too, and actually attract the magnet. This idea is called Lenz's Law. A magnetic field produced by an induced current will always oppose the changing magnetic field. The produced magnetic field resists changes. Now with that being said, we're going to induce some more eddy currents and explore Lenz's Law a bit closer in a totally different way, with just a few home supplies. First, you need some strong magnets for this. Neodymium magnets are recommended, and they are available at most hardware stores these days, but even some larger, traditional magnets can work for this too. The stronger the magnets you use, though, the more of an effect you're going to get. Next, you need something long that the magnets will be attracted to. Something like a large nail could work. For me, I'm going to use this Allen wrench that I had. Finally, you're going to need an aluminum can. Something that's conductive, yet is not itself attracted to a magnet. Aluminum is ideal for this. It also, though, has to have a large opening at the top, and so while there are some options that exist, I found that cat food cans are like the perfect ideal size. Of course, you're going to want to empty and clean it out. All right, got your stuff? It's time to induce. Start off by placing a small amount of water in your dish. This is just to give our empty aluminum can a near frictionless surface to float on. And it's worth noticing here that your magnets will not attract the aluminum can. Certain metals or any other material that is strongly attracted to magnetic fields, those materials are described as ferromagnetic. Aluminum is not ferromagnetic. All right, now we're ready to see Lenz's Law in action. With whatever you're using to hold on to your magnets, start circulating them within the inside of the can. The closer you are to the inside edge, the better the effect. Make sure that your magnets aren't bumping the inside of the can. They should never come into contact. Now check out what's happening. Even though the aluminum isn't attracted to a magnet, we've been able to cause it to move using induced eddy currents. Now wait a minute though. Doesn't Lenz's Law say that the induced magnetic field should be in opposition? So why then is the can moving in the same circular motion that our magnets are moving? Shouldn't it be going the opposite way? Well, at first glance, it might seem like this is somehow wrong, but we gotta think a little bit deeper into this one. Well, actually, don't forget, Lenz's Law actually states that the magnetic field produced will be opposing the change that's causing the current. That change is our moving magnet. So any part of the can that our magnets are moving towards at any given time, that's resisting the change by producing a field that is repelled by that magnet. And any part of the can that the magnets are moving away from, well, they're resisting that change by producing a field that's attracted to the magnet. As long as we're thinking about it the right way, we can see that Lenz's Law is working just fine. And another thing that we can do to observe and verify Lenz's Law is to use our magnets as a type of braking system. Once you got your can going, have your magnets become stationary, not moving. You can see that as the can slows down and comes to a stop, an opposed magnetic field is being generated. This time though, the opposed field isn't being generated by the movement of the magnets, but by the movement of the conductor. You see, when it comes to inducing currents, 
It doesn't matter whether or not the conductor or the magnetic field is what's moving. Just so long as the magnetic field that the conductor is experiencing is changing. Lenz's law, which explains many situations where the motion of a conductor and a magnet are opposing each other, is put to use in a variety of ways. Certain high precision scales take advantage of magnets in Lenz's law to keep certain moving parts from fluctuating as much when you want them to be still. And a lot of roller coasters actually use copper and magnets to cause the roller coaster carts to slow down in certain areas. And in such roller coaster braking systems, since the conductor and the magnets are never actually in contact with each other, there isn't really any friction, and so they don't really wear out. All right, I hope you found this episode quite conductive of your enjoyment with very little opposition. <laughs> but don't put those magnets away just yet. We have many experiments coming soon that are going to continue this electromagnetic exploration. If you enjoyed this episode, may I induce you to give it that ever appreciated thumbs up like. It helps out. And get a hold of me through Twitter or down in the comments below and let us know how this experiment went for you. And or let us know of any future Indie Lab suggestions you have for different topics you'd like us to explore. We love taking requests. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.